Today I'm going to be doing something potentially quite stupid. I'm going to take my least popular videos, literally the lowest viewed videos on my channel, all the videos that the fewest number of people have chosen to watch, and I'm going to take those videos and I'm going to put them into a new video. I'm going to combine all of my least popular videos and make a new video out of them. If that's not a recipe for enormous success, I don't know what is. That was sarcasm, in case you couldn't tell. Now before we start, I want you as the viewer to rate each one of these builds from 1, which is totally pants, up to 10, which is totally amazing. If we end up with a bunch of pants in the comment section, then I've totally failed. If we end up with a bunch of 10s, then you're all delusional. Let's crack on with our first redstone build. And this first one is the redstone fire pit. Now this is, I, I mean, I can totally understand why this wasn't popular. It is utterly pointless. <laughs> it doesn't... I mean, it looks kind of cool, but I would not be surprised if nobody ever constructed this. Never. Nobody else other than me. So let's try and at least make it somewhat cooler. I think one thing that we do have now is we have cooler blocks that we can build this thing out of. Sandstone and stone slabs isn't exactly sinister looking for a fire pit. Today I learned that you can't place nether warts on wart blocks. All right, I would say we were off to a good start here. Nothing to do with the redstone, but this definitely looks cooler. Oh, now one thing that I haven't checked. Does this game mechanic still work? <laughs> um, well, this, oh, what a failure. Okay, fire charges, no. Flint and steel, also no. But I'm not afraid because we have campfires. And campfires are pretty sweet. Yeah, that immediately looks way cooler. That actually looks really, really good. Didn't really give myself much space to play with here. It's time for some redstone. So, when we flick the lever for the first time... That should send a redstone signal up to the top. That will dispense the water, putting out our campfires. Then when we flick the lever here, that will activate our flint and steel. And don't worry, this piston won't be activated because I'm going to be making use of the greatest block in the game, the target block. It's also worth mentioning that my original fire pit made use of fire charges, which is totally ridiculously expensive, whereas this one makes use of flint and steels. I would say that immediately upgrades it from a pants. Oh. I know nothing about Minecraft, clearly. Thankfully, all hope has not been lost because campfires can be extinguished by being hit with a splash water bottle. I'm just hoping that none of them miss. Well, that was unbelievably cool. Okay, this... This is... This is actually... This is annoyingly really cool. <laughs> like, I kind of want one of these in my base. Can you imagine if you had a bunch of them? Man, and it's consistent as well. Those splash water bottles, they are not missing. I'm just, I'm picturing like a bunch of these things lined up on either side of a walkway and then they just gradually ignite going down the, oh, that would look so cool. Well, build number one was an unexpected success. Build number two is the simple minecart catcher. Not exactly the most exciting title for a video I've ever come up with, but the idea is, is that the minecart is constantly cycling around until you hop into it and then it allows you to travel off which sounds quite noisy, to be honest with you. It also seems like it would be quite difficult to get into as you've got to chase the minecart around. And if you come into it from the other direction, then you're gonna have to be quick to jump out because if not, you're gonna bounce off the back wall and then just go back the way you came. I can also totally understand why this video was not popular. It's pants. So let's try and make a new and improved, slightly fancier version. I want to maintain the hands-free element, which is why we're making use of string, but I also wanted to have automatic player ejection and also automatic minecart breaking and redispensing, which all sounds really complicated, but it really isn't. In fact, if I haven't overlooked something completely major, this should be everything. Of course, I overlooked something major. So this is the new and improved design and it is working absolutely perfectly and looking incredibly fancy while doing it. And if for whatever reason I was concerned about runaway minecarts where the minecart has escaped without me in it, not that that would really happen with a system like this, but still, it could be a concern. That's all was the point of the original video, solving a problem that essentially nobody has. Then I could construct one of these things. Now this is a minecart catcher, so if I hop in this minecart here and then hop out of it, you can see the minecart has been captured by the system. Now, if I eventually come along and want to ride in this minecart, I can just hop inside and move away. But if I'm inside of the minecart, then I shouldn't be captured by the system at all. That looked strange, but it worked. Cool. I would say we have executed both elements of the original design far better than I did previously. Let's move on to unpopular build number three. And that is my fancy dynamic fire lighting. Now, funny story, this was actually uploaded two days after my simple minecart catcher, so clearly I wasn't having a good week on YouTube, but the idea is simple. It converts a flush, regular Minecraft wall into a wall with fire in it. 
pretty fancy, but not fancy enough for me. First plan of action to make this thing look cooler is to make use of stairs and also double the height of the opening because when it was just, it was like this one by one gap and then a fire in it. I mean, that that just looks a little bit pants, doesn't it? I've said pants a lot today and that is not an issue. So stage one of the process is now all complete. We have got the retraction and already this is looking pretty fancy. I always love the transforming stairs trick. It's one of those things that has been around since I think around about 2012, 2013, but it is just, it's fantastic. The final part was to connect up our flint and steel dispenser to the rest of the circuitry so that that would fire so that we actually would get a fire. And that did involve me changing up the double piston extender circuit just to make life easier, but this still, this is not new technology. You know, this was around when I did the original build. In fact, this might be the same double piston extender I used. It is the same double piston extender I used. I'm not entirely sure that's a good thing, but let's move on from that because this, this, this is pretty fancy, isn't it? This is very fancy. I am a fan. I am an enormous fan of this. I don't know if it's because I haven't done any form of fire lighting essentially since 2013, so it feels new and fresh to me. But I, I just love the way that this looks. And I'm hoping that because of the way that I've done the redstone, we should be able to have a bunch of them next to one another. And they should have an inbuilt sequence to them. Oh my goodness. It actually works. Well, this is epic. This is epic. I mean, look at that. I want that. I want that in my base and in my house right now. I think it's safe to say that I'm chuffed to bits with that one. Anyway, now it is time to take a look at my fourth most unpopular redstone video, this one being my cauldron storage system, which is the most pointless thing I've ever heard in my entire life. And a fun fact about this one is it was uploaded the day before my fire pit, my least popular redstone video. So I really... This was not a good week for me. With that being said, although this build was utterly pointless in 2013, I mean, why would you need to store a bunch of filled cauldrons? Nobody needs that. In 2021, it actually is quite useful because of dripstone. So we can have these cauldrons automatically fill up, but only have one of them visible on the outside, which is that's actually quite nice. I was an innovator. I was eight years ahead of my time. So the first thing has been completed, which is the cauldron retraction through the wall. So that retracts it back, puts it in the piston feed tape, and then that allows it to rotate round. That, oh, that could be an issue. But after a little bit of expansion, it wasn't. And now all of the wiring for the piston feed tape is in place. So we essentially have a standard observer-based piston feed tape. This piston over here is activated when this double piston extender fully retracts, so that will push this one out and that will start the cycle of the piston feed tape. The only slight piece of fancy redstone that I've had to do is add a little bit of wiring for this piston over here because we don't have room to fit the observers in this wall. So I've actually had to connect those into the circuit. But other than that, this is super, super simple. And as far as I can tell, it all seems to be working. So let's get this filled in. This is taking a little bit too long for my liking, so I think we should speed things up just a little bit. There we go, that's a little bit more like it. And now this utterly pointless, utterly, utterly pointless build that I constructed back in 2013 now actually has a purpose. And it's actually pretty cool. Like this is a really neat way to store a large quantity of lava without having it visible. And look, okay, okay, I know, I know I've said this a bunch in this redstone video, and I know I say it a lot in my redstone videos, but I kind of want this in my base. I, I like this. I'd like, I'd like to have it. I think this means that it can't possibly be rated as a pants, and I'm happy with that, because the original definitely was firmly pants. And on that note, let's move on to the next. And this one is known as the surfing safe drop. Now, this is an anomaly in this video because I genuinely think this thing is awesome. I still think this thing is awesome. And I remember recording the video and thinking it was awesome. And I, I can't, I can't for the life of me understand why it didn't, it wasn't popular. So let's bring it back. Now my only goal for this is to make sure that the little thing that I surf on is as thin as possible. I want the smallest amount of water. I would also like to make it fully automatic if I can. <laughs> that has not gone well. It would help if I actually put a water bucket in my dispenser. Now, just to be very clear, this is not going to cut off the blade. But it does dispense it in time. Perfect. Okay, I think with this setup here, we could be onto a winner. 
What? All right, with this setup here, I think we could be onto a winner. Goodness me. Please. Yes. That is perfect. It's a little bit more water than I was hoping for, but I can't seem to be able to get that water blade any smaller. Anyway, if I walk up to this thing and just drop through, you can see that I look epic. I look like a weird kind of superhero. Do I actually need to hold any buttons? Like, do I need to hold the space bar? I was holding the space bar then, but it actually doesn't seem like I have to. This is wicked. I mean, sure, it's not the fastest way of traveling vertically, but it's definitely one of the most cool. And now that it's fully automatic, there's no fiddling around with buttons and things. I honestly, and I'm gonna say it, <laughs> I kind of want one of these in my base. Why do I want everything in my base? You know what? I was expecting this video to be a total failure, but it hasn't been a total failure. Even if nobody watches it and it becomes my new most unpopular video, it's been a load of fun. I've really enjoyed revisiting these old pants redstone contraptions and trying to make them better. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. And if you want to see more of this sort of thing, then please let me know down in the comment section along with your ratings for all of the new and improved builds. I can't wait to read them. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya. And just as a completely unrelated update at the end of this video, for those of you who don't know, I am cycling 1000 kilometers in October for the Cycling Projects charity. And I'm currently at 225 kilometers covered, which means I'm a little bit behind, but I'm feeling good, I'm feeling strong, I'm making good progress, and the donations page is ridiculous, so thank you all for your generosity.